tournament. That's not really true. But then again, too, it adds to the mystique and the and the allure of yes. the back nine. No doubt about it. But this hole has also become real famous. Uh, the Roy famous snap hook left where he literally hits his second shot between the cabins uh, up in the trees uh, left of number 10. And, of course, number 10 famous for Bubba Watson's long drive right at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. and where he hits this 45-yard draw wedge up to the green. And, uh, of course, you know, that ends up winning him the tournament. Yeah. Um, I stood in the spot where he hit that shot, and I, I that took some serious talent. Well, not I mean, only talent, just, but creativity. Creativity. Yeah, I mean, intellectually. Imagination. It's, yeah. A lot. Only more Bubba, I got. Only Bubba would I do got. that. Yeah. More than I, got. I mean, yes, being left-handed, some people claim, well, being left-handed, it helped. He could just hood the face. Come on, dude. No. I don't care if you're left-handed or right-handed. If you're right-handed, you think you're going to stand over that ball and say, okay, I'm going to fade this thing 45 yards? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You're just not going to do it. Otherwise, you're blowing it over there on the TV tower at number 11 tee box. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, that's exactly where you're going to end up at, and you're looking at triple from yeah. over there. So um, the hole has become famous, yes. and I believe, like with Roy, for example, he was on a roll, and all of a sudden he snaps his drive, and he was done for there. Yeah. So 10 is pivotable. If you go mm -hmm. through there, if, if you make par, you're okay. If you make birdie, you're picking up two shots to the field. Yeah, you make bogey, you're still in the ball game. The green, you, you go worse than you make double or worse, and you you might as well cook. Your we've beer. seen a testament to the green hue with like Adam Scott's putt, mm -hmm. uh, where Stevie was giving him one read, and he was seeing another, and he ended up going with Stevie's read. And I mean, we saw how lightly he touched that ball, and it was pouring rain. It was really nasty weather, but yet those greens, that slope on that green on number 10 well, from right is to just, left is it's ridiculous. I mean, it is a harsh right to left slope, and that's why, you know, Bubba hitting that shot in from those trees that you're talking about, Al. Yes, sir. You know, that's why the ball stops us off because it's actually turning into that slope instead of coming in like a right-handed player's where it would have been right to left and hits and runs with that slope. So. You know, there's just a lot of ways and a lot of things about Augusta National that, uh, you know, these players learn and the nuances that, that can make or break you. Definitely. Well said. Definitely. Number 11, White Dogwood. Um, this is a great golf hole. If you're a spectator at Augusta National, if you have the opportunity to attend a Masters, I would highly recommend that you make your way down to number 10 green. And then as you leave number 10 green, most of your spectators, most of your patrons are going to make an immediate right behind number 10 green and start heading down number 11. If you have the opportunity, if they have the area roped off, you are allowed at different points in time to go up to the tee box and actually view them hitting their drives on number 11, White Dogwood. This is a 505-yard par 4 that if you were to go back and stand on that tee box and look, you you absolutely are amazed how they could even get their tee ball out from that tee box. Oh, it's a, it's a shoot. I mean, it, when they talk about shoots, that's what's been created there. And, you know, just sitting here looking at the pictures, George, on the, on the Masters website of 11 to the right, I mean, I remember when number number 11 on the right over there was just nothing but a wide expanse. Yeah. And now you look at it in the trees, it's just – this is a golf hole now. Well, interestingly, it's just gorgeous. in 2004, I mean, 2006, they, uh, Augusta actually went in and added trees to the right-hand mm -hmm. side because mm -hmm. the likes of Tiger and Sergio and a couple of other players that were of longer hitting, um, they, were, they were just basically aiming down the right, hitting the big draws, and finding themselves with wedges into this green. And, of course, the – those that make the decisions at Augusta did not and did not believe that Bobby intended number 11 to be played with a driver wedge, that it should be a middle iron or a long iron coming into this green. And because frankly, with a wedge in your hand, 11 green is kind of defenseless unless that pins over on the left hand side. So they wanted to make sure that they stuck some obstacles up there to stop them from turning one in. But really, the play into this, because the green, the fairway actually tilts from right to left, mm -hmm. um, is not a fade off this box, really a preferred shot nope. instead of taking a draw down there? 
No. No? Because, I mean, and again, you think about it back before they put the trees in. You could hit it down that right side, and if it turned over, great. If it didn't, it would hit and run. It would hit into the the mounding areas and, and just and take release off and down. go. Yeah. And so that's the thing. And then you look at it, everybody says, oh, you know, it's defenseless and less depends in the back left. That green slopes from the right to the left towards that pond as severe as 10 does. People just don't realize it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll never forget talking to Scotty Steele after Larry chipped in to beat Norman. Right. And Scotty was his caddy, and I'd known Scotty for years, and I used to get to practice with Larry. But he said, Hugh, he said, if that ball doesn't hit the flag, it's in the water. It's he in goes, the water. We yeah. had no shot. We right. hit the only shot we could think of to maybe have a chance to keep it on the green, got a good hop. And then when it started going, taking the break, it was like, please hit the hole, hit the flag. And I will say, I was actually there in the crowd about 15 feet behind him when he hit that. And it was getting dark quick. Oh, it was. I was halfway up the fairway just because there were so many people and we had been right. following them. And, you know, as they were coming back up the fairway after he won, you know, in the cart, Scotty waved and saw us and, you know, kind of tapped and, and Larry waved. You know, it just – there were so many people in the way that happened and just to see the deflation in Norman. I mean, this golf hole is not defenseless. I mean, there's so many things that can happen on this particular hole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you talked about 10 becoming famous. This one's become famous. Now, the next hole we go to is infamous. And then we go to 13, which thing, you know, there's just this back nine is just every hole has got something to it. Well, again, number 11 is the start of quote unquote, amen corner. Yeah. And so yeah. basically you're saying a, a prayer if you get through it in even par is, mm -hmm. is the design of it, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, so you've got 11, this long par four, again, uh, severely elevated from your hitting area up in the fairway down to the yeah. green. The green sits down. It's got the little pond on the front left. It's got the pump house back left. And then it's got Ray's Creek behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, pins front right, back right. They can go at it. They don't want to get in the bunker, really, but that's a good up and down. Uh, you'll also see players purposely aiming front right for it to just stay in the apron, the short, the short grass, uh, so they can just apply a chip up maybe to a back middle or back left pin yeah, if, uh, if instead pin, of attacking it. The pin back right, that is the easiest one. I would say front of the green to the left center of the green to the back left of the green are the pins you're talking about that the guys are just like just get me on the green get me out of here with a four and i'm gone and you'll see them lay up and go right and end up short right and everybody's going oh you know like oh they miss hit that mm -hmm. uh, uh that's where they were mm -hmm. playing it to yeah. that was where if they were going to miss that's where they were gonna that's miss. right and one thing you know you'll notice when i watched on tv for years and years you know the course looks relatively flat you know from watching it on television and when you actually get there and see the elevation rises and decreases, it the TV does not do the course justice. Not at all. Um, you, it's one of those things you really just got to walk it and see it because, um, you know, like I say, the pictures in, in the TV just does not does not um, depict it very well. We're going to leave number eleven and we're going to take a short walk up to number twelve, T box, which literally uh, within just about every camera angle is in the shot, and mm -hmm. as a patron. You are very respective of the fact that there are people playing 11, putting on 11, and then also a group that will be teeing off a 12. There will also be a group that will be putting on 12, and then there'll be a group that will be teeing off on 13. And it's all right down there at the lowest end of the property that is Augusta National. And we're talking about the Golden Bell, number 12, par 3. It's going to play between 135 and 155. Um this is a horizontally shaped green as in relation to the tee box itself. Of course, we've got the famous slope that brings everything from the front of that green back down into Ray's Creek, unless you're Freddie Couples. Unless you're Freddie Couples. Unless you're Freddie Couples. And, of course, you've got the bunker front left. Um, you've got the swell and the heel of azaleas behind the green left. And then it's, it's a little somewhat open for a long right miss. But... Um, Really, the guys go into this, Hugh, four days. Let me just aim at the middle part of the green. Let me just get it on the green. And then, depending on where the pin is, give an aggressive putt at it. Well, you know, I laugh when, you know, you sit there and you listen to the announcers and they talk about, you know, this green, you know, guys just want to hit it over the middle of this bunker. Well, no matter where the pin is. I mean, this, is, this green is the shape of a dumbbell in the gym. 
You know, mm-hmm. you got the two, you it. got the two big ends of it, and you got the the handle in the middle, and that's where they're telling these people they're that they're aiming. And I guarantee you, it's not ten to twelve feet wide in the middle of that green. So, so you're really better off. To me, you're better off trying to put yep. it in the heavy, in in the thicker, bigger spot, which is front left, or it's in the the back right over there. I mean, that's just you you got to take a chance on taking the right club and, and yeah hitting it over that green it gets a little iffy back there it's a little thin grass well wise. it does i mean we've seen uh seve ballesteros probably the best short game in the history of the game and literally come over the ball back off the ball come over the shot mm-hmm. back off the shot it just coming from that back left or back middle even if you're not into the azaleas but just coming from the little overrun behind this green is notorious because if that pins front right and you're trying to come across the green and also get it to check and and stop and slow down a little bit if you overrun the green very easily you could just slide right off go down the slope and into race creek oh there's no question that's why you so, see so many guys putt yep exactly yeah good point this is one of the most in my personal opinion is one of the most beautiful of stoles I, you know i just there's just something about it I oh had, it's gorgeous i had and it's not that long. It's it's just like TPC number seventeen at TPC at Sawgrass. It's only one hundred and forty yards. Mm-hmm. No, this is one fifty five. But it's devastating. It, yep. it it can make or break a a, a tournament for you. Definitely. And number twelve is the same way. You can you can go in there and say, okay, it's one hundred and fifty yards. I I'm hitting a nine iron or an eight iron, whatever they hit. And um, you know, it can you make three? You can make five, yep. real quick. Yep, yep, yep. Real quick. So. Let's walk over. Actually, we're going to walk over and we're going to head up to the edge of the property. And actually, the new tee box on 13 um, just got extended back several years ago. They ended up acquiring some land from an adjoining golf course. Um, and, uh, club. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they ended up moving the tee box back a little further in order to basically bring the trees at the corner in play of this par five dog leg left that is known as azalea again it's going to play about 510 yards and this is a birdie eagle hole no doubt about it it adds to the excitement it adds to the allure of amen corner but we also saw a lot of players through history hugh where they let's say they don't turn it over they hit it straight they're up in the trees we we remember mickelson Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago great shot he hit out of there six iron from that spot, mm-hmm. 210 yards. And really, you were wondering, oh, my goodness, it's sitting on top of pine straw. Is he going to be able to catch it clean? Is he going to hit that tree in his follow-through? Mm-hmm. Is he going to be able to get a good backswing on it? You know, is he going to be able to play short, or is he playing short, or is he going for the pin? You know, that was all the intrigue of his shot before he walked into it mm-hmm. and then executed the most brilliant shot that we – one of the most brilliant we've seen in the years of Augusta National. So, you know, it's it's just – this is a this is a hole that if you're not making birdie, you're giving up two. You're losing strokes. I mean, you're losing at least one if you don't make four. But, I mean, it's a hole where a caddy, a tour caddy, that gets paid all this money to be there and, and to, to help these guys to win majors – if you've got anybody that you're caddying for that has any length and you let them hit anything other than a three wood off of this tee, you should lose your job because it's a three wood and maybe a three, four, five iron, depending on how well you turn it around that corner. Mm-hmm. The worst thing you can do is try to hit driver. You're not going to carry the trees on the corner. Number one, they're too tall. And number two, they go too far around that corner that guys don't really see. And if you hit it straight away and it doesn't turn, you're up in the middle of these trees. They let those trees grow down lower to the ground for a reason. You know, take three wood, take your medicine, put it in fairway, and then hit your shot in there. If you make three, great. If you don't, make four and get out. We've only seen a couple left-handers really challenge the left side of the fairway, as you mentioned, the corner. The trees do elongate down the creek line, Mm -hmm. and that creek line actually juts into the playable ground area as -hmm. you get around the corner. So we've only seen a couple. We saw Phil Mickelson catch one, thought he had hit it a little bit too far left. Uh, He was peeling it around with his little fade. It ended up hitting just past Ray's Creek and then bound up into the fairway, and all of a sudden he's got a seven iron in his Mm -hmm. hand. Uh, we've seen the likes of Bubba Watson, again, a left-hander power hitter, blow it over that corner, and he actually took an 8-iron into there. So there are a few select that can mess with that left-hand side. I agree with you. 
why not just take it down the middle? If you draw it, great. You'll get a big kick with that three wood. Mm-hmm. If you don't, it's sitting up there short of the tree line on the right. And you still get there. And you still get there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, number 13, Azalea. Again, it's ranked 17th hardest hole on the course. So that tells you there that the stroke average ought to be below par. And historically, it is. 4.79 is the historic stroke average for Azalea number 13. Now, let's move into what I feel is one of the better golf holes on the back nine at Augusta National. And, of course, I'm talking about number 14, Chinese Fur. And this is a 440-yard par four that doesn't get a lot of attention, guys. It just really doesn't because you're watching what happens to the groups on 13. Even when the final group comes through, you don't see them except focused on their drive on 14. You know, you won't see a lot of coverage of them hitting their approach on on the 14th hole. Uh, You may see them putt, but... It, it's kind of a straightaway par four, but yet it's a lot tougher than it looks. And it doesn't have a bunker on it. doesn't have a bunker on it. No. Great point. And the thing that, that about this hole that just from, you know, years of, of living in the Aiken Augusta area and being able to play over here, you know, never playing in the Masters, but being able to play the golf course, it's a golf court hole that I didn't like because it dog legs left and it slopes right. And that's where you see a lot of the pull shots from these guys where they try to turn it in there and they overcook it and then you've got those pine trees that hang around the corner right there on the left that can can hem them up a little bit hem them up Mm -hmm. or you can find your ball bounding off the fairways depending on how hard or soft the fairways Mm -hmm. are playing and then you find yourself down into the quote unquote augusta rough which is it's not rough it's better than it used to be oh yeah i mean they've gotten it to a couple inches now where it used to be it was better than most country clubs fairways yeah exactly so, so they've let it grow they've a let bit it grow through a little the years. bit just to help them with the pitching and that kind yeah. of stuff but again we've saw uh, in the years past we saw a lot of balls come off the fairway end up at that tree line right mm-hmm. and again it's just uh you know a, a lot of luck whether you are blocked out or not blocked out so mm-hmm. uh interestingly folks um this par four as i mentioned it doesn't get the allure but the stroke average historically for this hole 4.18 so it's playing over par on average mm-hmm. historically number eight handicap hole on the golf course. And it, I mean, and it, George, you look at it, it's a huge green, yep. huge green. But the the front half of that green is is useless. But you look at the parts that they use and that they have greens. Just look at the slopes and how it, everything's left to right and everything's moving to the right down towards Ray's Creek in the yep. slopes. And, you know, they'll put pins in certain places where if you hit it in the right spot, the ball goes right to it. It's a tap. Distinctively an Augusta National green with quadrants. Exactly. And yes. if you don't know how to con- – if you cannot control your golf ball going into a green, your distance. And uh, I you, people hear me say it all the time, and I apologize again, but you better learn pace, you better learn distance, and how to change gears because if you can't, this place will eat you alive. Yep, it sure will. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to number 15, Firethorn. This is going to play at around 530 to 540. It uh, Interestingly, guys, back in the 30s, this was only a 480-yard par 5. So we've seen it grow 50 yards through the years. And uh, there's not really much room left for them to move the tee box back. Right now, it, they've already cut across the walk area. Uh, you don't really say a cart, uh, the cart walk or whatever. So a cart path. They just move it. They just move it. Yeah, it's so. back behind eighteen T now and closer to ten green is where yeah. they've moved it to. And they've got a little more room to go there. The problem is, it's just become such a blind tee shot, especially now they put the trees on. Well, the right. also too the tee box. If they move the tee box back any further, then they're going to be impeding kind of the landing area of eleven. So they can move it right and try to bring a little bit more of those little trees and the mounds that they put up there through the years. They could bring those more into play, kind of driving the balls left behind those big natural pine trees that are there that are blocking out a lot of shots anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, But again, as you stand there on the par 5, number 15, on the tee box, you are basically, you see the fairway in front of you, and then you see sky. You see nothing else. Mm -hmm. So you're hitting uphill, 
uh, your drive, but of course the drives for the pros, they're flying over the hill and they're trying to get this thing on the right hand side to move a little right to left. That's the objective. And uh, that way they can pick up as much of the quote unquote slot again. We talk about that a lot, but there are little quadrants of the fairways that they're aiming for. They want to find those. Um, if they pull it a little bit, you're going to end up down in that little cutout area of the fairway mm-hmm. they have behind the trees. And we've seen some spectacular shots around those trees yes. left. Uh, I mean, we've seen the Roy McElroys. He's done it. Um, Freddie Couples was famous for it. Mm-hmm. Um, that ended up leading to one of his wins was the approach shot he hit. He was behind. He was as close and behind those trees as I've seen anyone. And he ropes this thing out there with a huge draw and puts it up on the green. And he ends up two-putting, but he makes birdie, and that leads him on to his win. So, nice. and, um, and this is a hole that, you know, when you see the guys have to lay up, you know, and everybody says, okay, they laid it up. They've got 75, 80 yards. Well, it's on a down slope on a tightly cut fairway. There's nothing but ryegrass. Um, and if there is any moisture in the ground, it's the most difficult 80-yard shot you'll ever hit. And the thing that learning from talking to friends that play in the, have played in the Masters and being able to play there a couple of times, if you have to lay up, you better lay up left. That's what I was just Because that's yep. the flattest part. Out. Flattest yeah. part, yep. And it gives you the best opportunity because if that pin's in that back left, you have no room to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Whether mm-hmm. it's short or long, there's just no room. And it's turtle-backed right there. And depending yeah. on it your drive, you. yeah, yeah it's uh, we've seen some famous layups on 15, of course uh, – the Tiger ruling, uh, Tiger TV ruling, that was a result of his drive. He had to lay up. And, uh, of course, he throwing his shot at the pin, hitting the pin, and then coming back into the pond, and then the famous drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen others purposely lay up that ended up winning the event or, or finishing second, and a lot of controversy discussion about, well, if they hadn't laid up on 15, would they have won? So, right. you know, it's it's a matter of uh, I'm okay if I do and I'm okay if I don't. But um, you'll see a lot of players, the longer hitters, of course, be wanting to come in this thing with long irons. An exciting shot for us, the patrons. Sure. An exciting shot mm-hmm. because they're trying to, again, as Hugh put it, this green is not the easiest in the world to hit, and yeah. it's not the largest in the world to be coming in from, from 220 yards. Yeah, and if you so, are, you better just hit it over to the right and take your medicine, two-putt, and get out. There is water behind the green that a lot of people don't yep. even know about, and that yep. is the pond on 16. That's correct. So that water does come in, although the trees will probably catch a ball that goes over. They but, will, but, I mean, it's just the balls that go over that green, it's guys that are really trying to make sure they get there, and, and then they overcook it. And when it gets going down that slope from where everybody's been walking, and it just – there's nothing to stop it. No. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not a fun shot coming from the back part of the green no, back up to this no. pin, especially when it's on Saturday and it's back right. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun uh, to watch, at least. I wouldn't want to hit it. Historical average is 4.78 for number 15, so it is the 18th hardest-ranked hole in the tournament. Interestingly, the easiest hole on the golf course, mm. number 15. Let's move on to number 16, the, first, the famous par three. And I say famous in the fact that uh, – I don't know, you want to use Tiger's shot where we saw the Nike logo go rolling in after he played That's a spectacular wedge shot. That's one uh, of do we, do we use Nicholas's uh, five iron uh, in 86 when he won? And he lasers remarkable. that five iron in there yep. three feet away. He thought it was going in. Um, his the son, one where he makes it going up the hill and raises the putter and boom. Go, you know, against on Gary this, Player? On this, yes. I yeah. mean, this green is unbelievable. And yep. it's... The hardest pin on this green, George, is the front right. Oh, yeah. When they put it behind that bunker, that's the one when they, they know they're going to see it. When they see it, they just go, oh, man, why today? You yeah. know? The, I got you. The back left is cake. The back right where, you know, if you look at their website right now and look at it, that pin right there, that is the hardest one they have. Back right. The back right on top yeah. of that ledge because you can't – you're trying to get it up there, but yet if you hit it past it in that bunker, you bunker, can't keep yep. it there. There's no you're short sided, really, done. really short sided. You're, you're going to have a 35, 40 footer coming back up mm-hmm. the hill, no doubt about this it. And is then more if, of a center green, this hole. is hit it in the middle of the green. Yeah, hit it in the middle of the green. Feet, yep. if it's yeah. in, but I mean, if you get it where it's front left, middle to back left, and you can hit it in the middle of the green and catch the slope, the ball's going to that flag. If okay. you have the right club. I've seen it. I've, yeah, I know exactly what yeah. he's talking and about. And actually, on Sunday, they put it bottom left um, 
on the back left side. Yep. And if you look at it with the shape and the contour of the green, it's one of the easier pins. Yes. Because you can use the backstop, which is the ridge that runs through the middle part of the screen. It'll right. kick the balls, any approach shots, it kind of kicks them left. They roll down toward the hole. Um, uh, you see guys that short side themselves and come into that bunker. It's not a bad shot coming out of that bunker, no. but you want to hit that bunker because if you hit the front slopes outside the bunker, you know, the, the margin of the bunker, then you're back in the pond. Yes. So, um, and then you don't want to be like we've seen a couple players over the years that have been long right, they didn't turn over for them, didn't catch the slope, and then they've got this breaker of about 15 to 20 feet mm -hmm. where literally they will be aiming with their back to the pin yes yep you will see putts literally the players lined up in the opposite direction mm -hmm. of the hole and I that is the allure of augusta i saw ben crenshaw last year or it was the year before last um working with one of the younger guys and he was showing him and you know, he's standing you know totally the opposite of the hole you know so i mean it's just amazing how much uh, the ball moves on those greens mm -hmm. interestingly the the pond that you see on 16 right now was a was a creek it was basically a little creek in 1947 they went ahead and dammed up that excess uh, water and then turned it into a pond. Yes. So, uh, and the green used to be left of the creek. Mm hmm. Yep. It sure wasn't did. where it is now. It was yeah. left yeah. of the creek. It was left of the creek. I didn't, I didn't know that. Historical yeah. average 3.16. So it plays uh, ninth hardest hole on the golf course. So I find that of interesting. Again, another hole playing over par. So uh, that's that kind of makes uh, some of these. Uh, total scores for four days of play by some of these players like a tiger woods for example pretty phenomenal so the way they can maneuver themselves around and uh, let's go to number 17 off of 16 again the allure of 16 the allure of 15 the excitable aspects of maybe making eagle on 15 making a birdie or a great shot or a chip in or a putt on 16 and then we get to 17 guys and another one of those ho-hum boring par fours well now the tree's gone yes now the dyke's tree's gone yes when that tree was there no it was not because i'm telling you that thing took up 75 80 it took up a lot picture. of room yes it's always impressive to walk behind the tee box on 17 and look out there and see that tree and you go i didn't realize it overhung that much yeah, and i can't tell you how many times people have played out of the bunkers on number seven green because it's just left to where that was because they try to hook it and turn it around <coughs> it overcook it hits a tree next thing you know they're over there on number seven trying to figure out now what am i going to do well interestingly the way this this hole is laid out uh, again, pretty much a straightaway par four. You're coming out of a uh, line of trees off the tee box. Uh, you're looking at the players. We'll either take it down the right, but be careful there because there are several trees on the right that overhang that do catch the quote-unquote movers of the ball right to left. And then also, too, you've got those faders of the ball that uh, now with Ike's tree gone, they will be able to take it down the left and move it back right. Uh, however... Where this hole really does its quote-unquote uh, protection, it puts up its shield, is the green. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. Two this bunkers. green, yep. this green is as diabolical as it gets at Augusta National. Yeah. Back left it's is a no big one. deal, but I mean, you go, you go front to middle right, and then you go back right. I mean, it. it it's so hard to get it close and get it within a makeable putt. Look at front right. Distance. Front right. If you put any spin at all on your approach shot, the longer hitters are going to come in with nine, eight. Um, I've even seen Bubba hit wedges. And I've seen Tiger hit wedges and put too much spin on it. You come back off the front right-hand side, mm -hmm. it's going to roll at least 30 to 25 yards back down into the fairway. Oh, yeah. And then it's almost impossible to get a chip back up to stop around the hole. More than likely, this green, I don't know whether it's designed to be this way, Hugh. This green always seems to play firm or firmer. Is that a word? Firmer? Well, this it, green seems to play harder than the other greens on the back nine. And very much so like number nine, George. I mean, they <coughs> both sit out in the middle of nothing. The sun. Yeah. There is nothing around it to shade it to create and maintain any moisture. And you know when they when they're doing their sub air stuff to to dry these things out, that you know these are going to dry out faster. Mm -hmm. Good point. So you know this green that's that's where it's at. Yeah. 
And we've seen tournaments like Jack in 86. Again, we bring him up, the spectacular win. We remember him throwing that ZT, McGregor ZT mm-hmm. putter up. And they uh, long the, made it for him. Yeah. And, and, you know, the block of metal that mm-hmm. was the McGregor putter. And we see him raising the arms. And then, you know, of course, uh, the famous win. I mean, his last major championship. So we've seen others that uh, come in and literally not breathe for to make their par putt and try to get through 17 mm-hmm. at least to 18 hopefully they can make a birdie yeah but mm-hmm. um although it looks like a docile hole it's uh no <laughs> this is uh make or break really coming down the stretch um this hole historically plays 4.16 and is ranked the 10th hardest hole at augusta national that is nardinia number 17 now we're leaving the green hue and we're going to take the very 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 short walk over to the 18th tee box and I mean short walk, it's 10 yards. And then we're on the 18th. And you do not get any concept of elevation unless you were to go down and walk up on 18T mm-hmm. box and then look out onto that fairway. First off, you've got another shoot of trees that you've mm-hmm. got to navigate. Secondly is, is the fairway looks like it drops about 100 feet below you. When in actuality, it's not that much, but it just looks that way. Yeah. And you've got those bunkers up the far left-hand side. Yep. And it used to be, I don't care, you could rip a driver and Big you bunker. weren't going to reach that bunker. And But then as technology and the athletes became stronger and stronger, we all of a sudden saw Seve blowing it into the bunker. Mm-hmm. We, we saw Nick Price blowing it into the bunker. We saw Nick Faldo blowing it into the we bunker. We saw Sandy Lau hit it in the bunker and end up winning the tournament coming out of the bunker. But, boy, and he didn't look happy going into that no, bunker, did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, now – I didn't know if he was going to hurl and just leave mm-hmm. stuff laying right there on camera or not. He was not happy. Oh, no. I remember that like it was yesterday. And hit a great shot. But, I mean, you look at this now, and it was a shoot before, and now they've moved this tee back towards even 15 further. even yeah. further. Yep. So, you know, th- there's no room. Mm-mm. When you stand on this tee, I mean, it literally looks like you're hitting down your hallway. And right. so, you know, this is one of those you want to have it just short of that bunker, and then you want to be whatever the, the dose of medicine is for your yardage, that's what you take. You put it on that green, you make four, and you get out. Well, we mentioned the bunkers. They were built in 67, and then the tee box was moved back 60 yards, and that was uh, and to the right about five yards. That was in 2002. And then the bunkers up on the left were again paid attention to in 2002. They were kind of readjusted. Um, again, up around the green area, Hugh, it's elevated. It's two-tiered, severely two-tiered. Actually, three-tiered, three-tiered. if you want to look at it. Um, there's a little mm-hmm. shelf on the front that runs across uh it does kind of lean from left to right so in other words balls coming up short of the green are basically going to come back off the front and come back down into the fairway then you've got the little swell that runs uh, about 10 12 feet onto the green Mm -hmm. and then uh, that runs extends for about 10 yards maybe about 25 feet and then it starts climbing back up to the back shelf Uh, again you got bunker right you've got uh, bunker front left and um you've got uh nothing really in the way except for the patrons long and uh Mm -hmm. to the left yeah that's right and we've seen a lot of players go at this with mid to long irons and use those patrons as they're out oh yeah that's your backstop (laughs) i mean they'll be firing they'll be firing for some kind of human anatomy there and as they're as they're my miss if I miss this, I'm going to be here. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and something just to throw in here, George, for you, for the pay, for the folks listening that, you know, have never be there. And you look at the website and you see all this expanse of green looking down the 18th fairway to the right over here. That was the practice tee for Augusta National. A mm, long time ago. The members would go out there with okay. shag bags in their caddies, and right. that's where they hit balls. The whole practice tee area you see now – Oh, that's up all by new. Washington Road. Yeah. That's all been done in probably the last sixty to seventy years. Okay. Well, actually, if the, not longer. Yeah the the, uh, the the practice area that was moved over back behind the clubhouse, or as they deem the the mm-hmm. behind the clubhouse, it was kind of on the, I mean when you got there and looked at it it was kind of on the smallish side and there were just two, and, two parts to it you had one on the right of the trees and one on the left of right. the trees and that's where you practice you had your little uh, hitting area right like you said and this is famous for of course uh, they putting the net up they telling John to 
maybe lean away from hitting drivers and that of course we're talking about daily for example he was blowing it over the netting in the back mm-hmm. and now augusta has acquired property on the uh, in the entry area over off of washington road it was a subdivision over there did not belong to the to augusta national they've acquired several homes they've acquired a lot of uh, land over there they've moved a parking lot over there but yet they've built an expansive practice area yeah, it's very nice and, and chipping very, area very nice. practice area mm-hmm. yep. putting area and basically it's a compound in itself that the players can go over and they have plenty of room to spread out they can go over and work for hours yep. and although as a, as a patron i can still go sit in the stands and watch this mm-hmm. but it's just now spread out over what looks like a football field yes. mm-hmm. instead of my backyard yeah. exactly is that is that yeah. a good way and of putting I mean, it and it's all this yeah. old stuff you used to see from mr hogan i mean you see all of him practicing at augusta and what he was over there to the right where the chip and green was Right of Magnolia Lane, where there was another, and that was the private. They go over there, and the patrons weren't allowed to come near him, mm-hmm. so he could go over there and practice and not have to worry about being disturbed. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of them went, and now that's all changed. And you know, I miss that too, Hugh, and the fact that I remember back years ago, um, the players coming out of the screen door, mm-hmm. out of the back member area, and you know, you listened for that screen door to see who came out last. Yeah, you know. Oh, who is it now? And as a patron, you stand there underneath the tree, which was the autograph area. Yeah. And the players would come in and out from that little roped-off area by the tree. And, uh, and then you sat there and go, oh, oh, I heard the door. Hold on, I heard the door. Who yeah. is it? You yeah. know, and the Lee Trevinos and yeah. the others that would come walking out of there and, and Jack and Arnie and, and the names go on and on and on. Um, I remember the first time I saw Seve at Augusta. And I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I didn't realize how big he was. Yeah, yeah, big man, big man. I mean, he was you know six two, six three, and I mean yeah. his shoulders are as wide as any quarterback yeah. in the NFL. I mean, he big just man, a yep. massive yeah. specimen. So. Um, again, we've been talking about the Holly Hole, a number eighteen at Augusta, and again, this will be the finishing hole. This will be where someone will either make a, a par to win the Green Jacket, someone will make a birdie to win the green jacket or someone will have a problem kind of mess up something make a bogey to possibly fall out and lose the winning of a major championship it is sunday at augusta national and number 18 just adds to the mystique and the allure that is augusta national golf club yes sir and we've seen a lot of wonderful views uh spectacular um let's say events that have happened on number 18 such as Jack playing his last event, mm-hmm. uh, Arnold Palmer, Mr. Palmer playing his last event, mm-hmm. and, and the likes of Hogan and Sneed and uh, the others, Mr. Sarazen, who was an honorary yep. starter. Yep. Um, so we've seen the greats come up this fairway for the last time. We yep. applauded. We cried. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But it is the 18th at Augusta. You will not see any changes to the 18th, no. radical changes to the 18th at Augusta National. No. And as long as that club's open and as long as we all love the game, I th- you will continue to see the 18th at Augusta National remain the way it looks today. Yeah. And you can so. see the big leaderboard from 18, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And that that's was just, the, it just gives me chills. The you hand, know, just, just the, the, the hand operated. Yeah, hand the op- hand operated. Hand operated. Yep. You have to remember that. Yep, hand yep. operated and of course they came out with the red numbers with and the, the green numbers and, and uh, all the flags from all the countries on yep, top of it absolutely it just gives you chills many 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 first that so is augusta national yep. uh number 18 of course uh holly plays 4.23 tied for six hardest on the golf course so it's not just a docile little par four it it uh it protects itself well and uh we've come to uh know and love this whole greatly yes we've been Definitely. covering the back nine here on coverage of the majors of course 2015 masters i want to thank my my guest and and my esteemed colleagues mr hugh roy the third dr grime mr al cloyd thank and of you course i'm me. your host uh george honeycutt and we want to thank you to to make sure you also continue uh, listening and tuning in we are having continuing coverage of the majors here on TGD Radio and TGD TV. And, of course, uh, we're leading you in to the 2015 Masters Championship. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just Just call call Dave. Dave. 
give us a call, 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. If you didn't catch this show or any other show, you can follow us on TGD Radio or TGD TV on the tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and Myrtle Beach Golf App. For the three amigos here, and of course, Big D behind the glass, we want to thank you for tuning in. There's more golf news information coming up next.